Secretary Summers, welcome to the program. Glad to be with you. You've been warning on inflation risks since February. What's your view on inflation now? I'm afraid things have come in worse than I expected on inflation. My view in, in February was that we had a lot of demand coming down the pike, that eventually the bathtub was going to overflow and we were going to have inflation because of the combination of fiscal and monetary policies and a big savings overhang. What has surprised me is how tight the labor market has become, how fast, how many supply side bottlenecks have uh, returned and how rapidly inflation has accelerated. And that seems to be translated into increases in inflation expectations. So I think we now have a gathering storm of inflation and we're likely to see some combination of that storm coming to fruition or the central bank being forced to act to contain inflation with potentially serious financial consequences or some combination of those two things. We've had labor market inflation wages at a seven and a half percent rate in the last month. We've had uh, consumer price inflation at close to a 6% rate over the last uh, six months. We've had houses, housing price inflation at over 20% over the last year. And almost none of that has yet been reflected in uh, the price indices. I think there are very serious reasons for concern. Well, given the supply shock problems we're seeing, do you see parallels in the global economy now with the 1970s? I actually see closer parallels to the situation in the 1960s that set the stage for uh, the 1970s. We've again got a very expansionary fiscal policy combined with loose monetary policy. We've again got a central bank that is heavily focused on social objectives rather than on avoiding uh, inflation. We again have a country that is substantially fractured uh, politically. Uh, we again have an idea that if we just stimulate demand, we can solve most uh, problems. And in the 60s, we saw before there were any adverse supply shocks, we saw inflation move from having a one handle in 1966 to having a six handle by 1969, and we've got much larger budget deficits today than we did then. We've got much more in the way of supply bottlenecks emerging much sooner than uh, we did then. So I think we're looking at a very serious uh, kind of uh, situation. Um, I hope I turn out to be wrong, and certainly markets are still expecting that I'm going to turn out to be uh, wrong. But uh, my sense is that the preponderance of risk is very much on the side of overheating. Will central banks, namely the US Federal Reserve, be constrained from acting to contain such an overheating scenario, given the huge debt burden carried by both governments and households? I think that's a concern. Um, an optimistic view would be that because of those debt burdens, efforts to raise rates will not need to be as extensive because economic activity will fall off more quickly. But I'm not sure that's true. I, I suspect for a variety of reasons, we have a less interest sensitive economy than uh, we once did. Um, so rates could go up a fair amount with a fair size consequence uh, for uh, asset prices. So I think we're looking at a pretty unstable financial environment. I know you're not a fan of modern monetary theory, but central banks the world over have delved deeper into this program during the pandemic. Do you think it's been part of the problem here, more inflationary than anticipated? I think the, the magnitude of the deficits have certainly contributed to very strong spending. And when you have more spending chasing less supply, that's when you tend to have uh, an inflationary dynamic develop. And I think that is a 
real cause for uh, concern. COP26 is just weeks away. In your view, can economies across the globe come together to combat climate change, given what you've seen with global coordination through the pandemic? I don't think we've established a track record that provides a basis for confidence. We've been uh, mixed at best on uh, the pandemic. Climate change is a much harder problem. It's a solvable problem with investment, with substantial transfers, with increases in the price of carbon, with great political will, this is something that can be solved, but whether it will be solved at this point, I'm very much in doubt. I'm hopeful, but certainly not uh, confident at this point. Secretary Summers, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.